Yesterday, I saw a movie called Yesterday. It was pretty good and I'm here to say, today I'm reviewing Yesterday. I'm not going to sing the whole review, it's okay, don't worry, you don't have to be concerned. Yesterday is the new film by Danny Boyle, who did Sunshine, The Shallow Grave, uh, Slumdog Millionaire, and basically a whole bunch of really good films. Most of you are probably screaming at me now, going, train spotting, train spotting. Yes, I know. It's written by Richard Curtis, who is a very British writer who did Four Weddings and a Funeral and all that kind of thing. A great director, and it's a great writer working together to tell a really simple story, but telling it surprisingly well. Basically, the story of Rami Malek, not Rami Malek, Jack Malik, not Rami, who uh, is the only person in the world who can remember the Beatles. There's a magical thing where he gets knocked off his bike, wakes up, and he's the only one that can remember that the Beatles existed. In fact, they have been wiped from history, as have a few other things. And he is the only person who can remember these songs, and he's a struggling musician, so he starts playing them, and people go, oh my god, this is incredible. Now, the film itself works under the premise that these songs are genius, and it doesn't matter who wrote them or where they came from, they were always going to be genius, and it doesn't matter what time they came from either, they're always going to be works of genius. And if you can get on board with that, then you know what? Cool. If you don't buy that, you're not going to buy the film. Himesh Patel is the, the lead guy, and he is so good in terms of his singing. Like, you buy that he is a schlub who doesn't know what the hell's going on. But at the same time, he's got enough quality of his singing voice and can do the Beatles thing well enough that you buy it. Lily James is the, I guess, I want to say love interest, but she's more than that. Like, she is his producer, manager but there's a whole bunch of other stuff going there and she is delightful she's really really enjoyable to watch also has a bit of beautiful singing in there as well and you kind of can't help but fall in love with that twosome uh as it were like it's it really works beautifully well and then uh there's a whole bunch of other characters who sort of show up there is the the, the roadie who is possibly one of the greatest moron roadies i've ever dealt with and i've dealt with some lovely roadies over the time you thought I was going to say nasty things about roadies, didn't you? I'm never going to say a, th a nasty thing about a roadie, because they can turn your mic off. And of course there's the evil uh, producer from big uh, audio company number five, whatever it is. Kate McKinnon is, is very, very funny in this, but also is kind of, you know, almost in her own film. Like, she's doing stuff that the other characters are like, are you, are you, are you meaning to turn this into this kind of film? Okay, cool. Ed Sheeran is not the best actor in the world, and I think that's something that we should probably just stick a pin in right now. Uh, he was in Game of Thrones. That was about as much as I could say positively about what happened with him and Game of Thrones. And there is a sequence at the end which I think could absolutely derail the film, and somehow it doesn't. And it's kind of astonishing that it doesn't, because it's such a bizarre thing to throw in, but at the same time is quite beautiful. It passes the old grey whistle test of if, if you walk out and you're still humming the songs, it's doing okay. It did that in spades. It is really enjoyable, but does it mean much? Mm, nah, but that's okay. Sometimes that's perfectly okay.